Welcome back everyone to your machine learning tutorial series. This video we are going to be talking about decision trees and specifically discriminatory power, which sounds completely politically incorrect, but we're just gonna have to deal with that. It's gonna be fun, so <laughs> stay tuned. This is gonna be a good video. For this video, I want you to pay special attention to this area right here. Okay, so we're looking at the root node and the next step. Well, how do we decide to split our data by age? And then how do we decide to split our data by history? That is what this video is going to be about. My dog has fleas, I think, so he's just like freaking out, like rubbing up against his cage. <laughs> we, we've done stuff, so it's not like we're just neglecting him. We, we've been trying to get that fixed. <laughs> Let's figure this out. How do we choose which attribute to put here to split our data? Why did we put age first and not wait? Because we're focusing up here, I'm going to erase this down here. Now, one more thing is, I want you to pretend this is an even simpler world than I've been making it already. And let's say anyone under 50 in the past has always been diabetes free. Anyone over 50 has always had diabetes. Well, then we don't even need to use these next questions. We can just replace those with no diabetes and diabetes. So we've just jumped to the leaf nodes right away. In a perfect world, it'd be this simple. You know, you go into the doctors, hey doctor, I think I might have diabetes. Well, how old are you? 49? Nope, you don't have diabetes, but give it a year. <laughs> but it's not that simple. And the reality is, it's going to be a lot more complex than this, but I'm gonna make it really simple for you guys. The thing that we want to put here is going to split our data based on target feature values as close as possible into this perfect world. So for example, if we have some people, we want to ask a question that is best going to separate the people with diabetes from the people who do not have diabetes. That's why it's called discriminatory power. <laughs> a descriptive feature has a level of discriminatory power that can split the data to get one group who has diabetes and another group who does not have diabetes. So in this specific example, we could say we split this group and these people do not have diabetes and these people do have diabetes. It's perfect. A more realistic example though, would split the data to where two of these people do not have diabetes and two of these people do have diabetes. So in that situation, the majority have no diabetes on this side, and the majority have diabetes on this side. So you can see how it's a spectrum. So I kind of drew this example for something else earlier in this series. Imagine kind of like a gauge or whatever that starts here, going this way, and this is zero discriminatory power, and this is like maximum right here. And you can think of it like moving from this end to this end. Oh shoot. <laughs> So in this perfect world, this attribute would have maximum discriminatory power. Realistically though, we're going to find descriptive features that are only pretty good at splitting our data. So, you know, their discriminatory power might be like here, for example. So when we're making our tree, the descriptive feature that's going to go here first is the one with the most discriminatory power. I'm gonna erase this now, and I'm gonna show you this visually. Here we have two bar plots and I have two descriptive features. This one over here, we have sex, and this one is age. Now let's look at sex first, and the percentage here is for that specific group. So if we look at just males, we could say 50% of them have diabetes. Or no, let's, you know, let's make it a little higher. Let's make it say 60% of them have diabetes. All right, and then let's say, you know, 53% of the females have diabetes. This percentage works because it's just inside the group of the males. So what I'm saying here is that of all the males, 60% of them have diabetes. Of all the females, 53% of them have diabetes. This might show that males have a higher chance of developing diabetes. That's because the majority of males end up with diabetes. It's just, it's just a correlation here. We can't say for sure, you know. There's a lot of different ways we could represent this data. And, you know, we could probably warp it to make it show what we wanted. Because it's really not that strong. Okay, now let's look over here. And in our perfect world, 
anyone under 50 has no chance of diabetes, and anyone over 50 has a 100% chance of diabetes. In this situation, the discriminatory power of age is going to be much higher than the discriminatory power of sex. So the descriptive feature to split our data on is always going to be the descriptive feature with the highest discriminatory power. Okay, 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 how do I explain this now? I'm gonna erase this one over here so I can illustrate something. Once we split on that data, so we start with age and we split into two groups of people, what is the next feature we're going to split on? It doesn't have to be the same for both of the groups because we're going to pick the descriptive feature that has the highest discriminatory power for that specific group. So in this group, you know, 100% chance if you're male, you're gonna have diabetes and 0% chance if you're female. In that situation, you would split your data on sex. In this situation, you know, we might have 50-50 for male and female, but family history of disease, if, if there is a family history of disease, then 100% chance they're gonna have diabetes. So we could have family history of disease over here. And you can see how it's very dynamic. Now you can see this gets really complicated, so we need an algorithm that's going to build this tree for us. And that's what we'll be talking about in the upcoming videos. So thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Oh, one more thing. I didn't really talk about it in this video because I don't want to go into all of the details of this, but that discriminatory power I was talking about, how do we go about figuring out a feature's discriminatory power? How much power does it have? You can actually quantify this, and if you want to know how to do that, look up Shannon's entropy model. And this is a formula that's going to give a number to a descriptive feature's ability to discriminate. <laughs> and that's something we might get into in upcoming videos, but right now I just want you to understand it conceptually, and then we'll figure out all the details of actually doing it later when that time comes.